What is going on, everybody? The NFL draft is all over. It is time to start talking about these grades, talk about who maximized on value and did the best job to improve their team moving forward. Remember to hit that like button. Also subscribe, turn on notifications, come back because throughout the next 24 hours, we are going to be dropping seven more videos just like this as we go through division by division. So we're going to start here in the NFC West. I think a really interesting division to talk about. A lot of interesting drafts going alphabetically here, starting with the Arizona Cardinals, who had the first overall pick in the draft. Kyler Murray, we're going to give this pick an A. Getting that franchise quarterback, I love the balls to make this move. This is something I've been saying this team should be doing since January. You know, Josh Rosen, a nice player, but everything's going to have to be perfect if you want to win a Super Bowl with Josh Rosen. Kyler Murray has the ceiling of a guy like Russell Wilson, that mobile quarterback, an elite arm, downfield accuracy is going to make the guys around him better. Also with that mobility going to be less dependent on getting offensive line, which as we have seen is very difficult to add in the NFL these days. But it wasn't just that first pick. Arizona, I think, actually had the best draft in terms of stealing talent later in the draft. Three of their first four players I had first round grades on, and between Zach Allen, Byron Murphy, and Kyler Murray, I at some point had mocked all of these players in the top 10, and Andy Isabella I had also once mocked in the first round, uh, but Byron Murphy, my number one corner to get him in the second round, someone I thought was, was pretty much a lock to go in the top 15 given the demand for cornerback, you now have him and Patrick Peterson. So yes, this offense is going to be exciting next year, and I think it's actually going to be pretty good. But this team's in a really good spot to actually compete next year because this defense is no joke. You have a really good pass rushing, uh, I guess, duo now because of how I think about Zach Allen. We'll see how that pairs out. But you know, you at least have Chandler Jones. You have a great duo of corners. Your safeties are great. You signed Jordan Hicks, who's a fantastic linebacker. This defense is not going to be a joke. It should be a, at least a top 16 defense. It has the potential to be a top 10 defense next year. Having that cornerback duo with Byron Murphy is going to be excellent. And then with the pick that they got for Josh Rosen, yes, this was less than I thought they would have actually gotten for Josh Rosen. I think that's more of a reflection on how dumb teams like the New York Giants are for using the sixth pick on Daniel Jones. They were probably the best candidate to go get Josh Rosen. And because they really weren't able to go a first round, Dwayne Haskins falls 15 to the Redskins. A lot of domino effects from what the Giants did in the Josh Rosen market, Miami able to trade a second round pick for him. But anyway, you get a really freaking good player. I thought Andy Isabella should have gone before this pick. He's got elite speed. He can be a deep threat just like Marquise Brown, who he had in Oklahoma. You already have great guys in the slot, so I see Andy Isabella projecting on the outside. And then to get Zach Allen with the first pick in the third round is a total steal. I see like a poor man's J.J. Watt. He's a much better pass rusher than people get credit for. He's going to be able to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one looks with Chandler Jones on the other side. So really a good consolation there considering, you know, they did not get Nick Bosa with the first pick in the draft. But to get Zach Allen, who I thought was a first-round talent in the third, excellent pick. Then you get Hakeem Butler. I'm not as high on him, but, you know, fourth-round value. You start seeing this guy fall, great pick there. I, I don't know if he's going to turn into anything. I just was not a big fan of his game. But worth the pick there. Uh, given the, the draft you've already had to this point, they have kind of smaller wide receivers there. He can learn from Larry Fitzgerald how to use that frame. So there's aspects of that pick that I really like. And then Deontay Thompson in the fifth round, total steal. You know, I thought he was a second round talent, just a really solid safety. He got some questions about his, his physicality and tackling ability. Doesn't have the elite range to be you know, speed and range to be an elite center fielder, but just a solid starting caliber safety. You get him in the fifth round, something like a haha -ha Clinton Dix there. And then, you know, a couple guys that are just kind of dart throws here at, at the offensive line. Don't really have much of a comment on those guys. And then you get Michael Dogby, developmental pass rusher. And then you, you just come away with Caleb Wilson as Mr. Irrelevant here. Wilson was my seventh tight end. I had a second or third round grade. I, I thought this was a, a total steal here. He should start day one at tight end for the Cardinals. So that was an excellent pick. And, and really no surprise here. I got to give this draft an A-plus for the Cardinals. I think they reshaped the landscape of this, this team. I mean, 
you know, if you had Josh Rosen and had a good draft like this, you'd be excited. But the fact that you still had this draft and got Kyler Murray first overall, I, I am just, you know, I, I think they are going to be a, a nine-ish win team. I, I would hammer the over for them if, if it's up already. And I think they're going to compete really well next year. Then we've got the 49ers here. Now, they had one of, you know, the, the gifts with Kyler Murray rising to number one because when they ended up getting that second pick, we weren't sure if they were going to able to land Nick Bosa, which was a clear and obvious pick for them. So that pick is going to get an A. And that D-line is going to be incredible. I think this 49ers team is poised to really break out next year. The rest of their draft, I've got some pretty serious questions. So Debo Samuel, I liked that pick. Fair value. I had a second round grade on him, so I'm not going to complain where you took him. Now he's, I, I think, more of a slot guy. Ironically, my comparison for him was Pierre Garçon, who we know fits in that Kyle Shanahan offense, played here for the 49ers, so interesting to see that. Uh, so maybe he will step outside. I like Dante Pettis in the slot. They definitely needed another wide receiver, and we've been targeting wide receiver in our mock draft. So that was a good pick right there. I don't know if I absolutely loved the pick, but it was really solid. And then I did not like the Jalen Hurd pick in the third round. He's kind of redundant now with Samuel and Pettis. These guys operate better in the slot. And I know that Jimmy Garoppolo kind of comes from that uh, New England background where they're not really looking to go deep. They're not really trying to out-physical you. They're trying to play smart, run quick routes, get open early. And, and Jalen Hurd does have really surprising quickness at his size. And he's still learning the position after transferring over to Baylor, former running back. So a high upside player for sure, an interesting player. I just did not really like this pick. When you look at the uh, players that were available in the secondary at this spot, San Francisco still has one of the worst secondaries in the entire NFL. And the fact that they did not walk away with any impact players in the secondary here, uh, despite a lot of them falling in this draft, was, was really a big bugaboo for me and the reason uh, I'm a little lower on this Niners draft. So then they trade up for a punter. You know, you could have grabbed a Deontay Thompson I, or a corner. Uh, but they go with a punter to get that cheap four-year deal, fine. But, you know, I'm going to give that one a D. Dre Greenlaw, athletic linebacker out of Arkansas, fine. Caden Smith, good pick here. Uh, good number two tight end here behind Kittle. Doesn't have to go very far coming from Stanford. Really good value here. I had a third to fourth round grade on Caden Smith, so I like that pick. He should be a, a good 49er there. I would expect him to be, you know, an impactful number two tight end. And uh, the Niners love love you know multiple tight end sets so he's going to be a good weapon there he can be something like a jason witten type weapon to help move the sticks as we know kittle has more of that vertical ability i like what smith's going to bring underneath uh, then you take a tackle out of vanderbilt a corner out of virginia neither of these guys were on my draft board of over 400 players uh, you know a lot of round six and seven players just weren't on my radar uh, so you know i won't criticize either of the positions that they took there I'll just give those picks a C. So overall, I, I give the draft a C plus. The Nick Bosa pick was a slam dunk. Debo Samuel's going to be a, a good impact. It's hard to kind of rip on a draft when their first and second rounds were good. That's where you really want to look at the meat on the bones. Those are where you're going to get your true impact players. But given what was kind of available and what they needed in the third and the fourth round, I, I thought that was some really suspect drafting there in the, in the middle of the draft that I, I would criticize. Now we've got the LA Rams. This team did an excellent job maximizing value, filling out what little needs they did have because this roster is pretty loaded. This team didn't get much from the draft last year, so the talent they bring in here really impressed me. So they trade down to add some more picks. They get Taylor Rapp. A lot of people consider a steal in the second round. That's about the range I actually had Taylor Rapp. Kind of second round. Uh, doesn't have that ideal athleticism, but a really instinctive player. Um, a lot of people compared him to Eric Weddle for that reason, and the Rams have Eric Weddle, so he can learn under him, like that pick a lot. Then Daryl Henderson, this was an interesting pick here and something I had thought about mocking them in my last mock draft, Daryl Henderson here to Memphis. Todd Gurley's a massive question mark right now with that arthritis in his knee. This gives you another running back. They clearly don't really believe in John Kelly, who I loved last year. So they bring in a running back here who is probably the second best running back in this class. He fits everything they want to do and a guy that can be a threat as a receiver as well. So this is going to give you security. The, this offense at times runs through that running back. And as we saw when Todd Gurley was not healthy, it was not the same. 
So upgrading the athleticism in that uh, in that running back room, a great pick there, good value. And the David Long, I loved this pick. It's rare to find corners with that athleticism and technique as a man defender. He's a little undersized, but this team runs a lot of man coverage, and I love this David Long pick. Then they grab Bobby Evans at the end of the third round. The Rams have some serious questions on that offensive line. Maybe not necessarily this year, but down the road. They just lost Saffold. Whitworth is a question mark. I think Bobby Evans is going to start at left guard for this team. I love going offensive line there. This was a good value. Then Greg Gaines, really good nose tackle out of Washington. This is why you don't take Dexter Lawrence in the first round. Greg Gaines is almost as good as Dexter Lawrence at what he does, and that's stopping the run. They needed some bigger bodies on the inside there. Gives you some long-term flexibility as well because Michael Brockers is gonna have to get paid here pretty soon. The Rams aren't exactly swimming in cap space, especially with that Jared Goff contract approaching. So a good uh, pick there for the future. Then David Edwards in the sixth round. This is a steal, eerily familiar to Rob Havenstein who came out of Wisconsin who they developed and turned into a franchise tackle. He could sit for a year behind Whitworth and maybe be a franchise tackle. A uh, pair of Wisconsin guys there. Then they go with Nick Scott, a safety out of Penn State. Nice player. And Dakota Allen, a guy a lot of people are intrigued by after what we saw from him in uh, Last Chance U, making his comeback at Texas Tech. Smart player, lacks the ideal athleticism. If he cracked his way into that linebacker, you know, getting some good reps there, it's not a very good linebacker room. So solid pick, just, you know, I don't think it's going to really change the game. But I loved what the Rams did, moving down, collecting picks, and still getting really good players. Having the foresight now to, you know, get some players that are gonna, are gonna help them keep that window alive, but also foresight here with guys like David Long, Evans, Gaines, Edwards, that, you know, salary cap is going to become an issue. And these guys all have potential to develop into starters and provide cheap replacements for some of the lower level starters on their roster or veterans that are gonna be you know, leaving or retiring like Whitworth. Then lastly, we've got the Seattle Seahawks. They kind of surprised everyone here taking LJ Collier in the first round. So I had a third to a fifth round grade on him. I like his athleticism. He, he's not completely unlike Rashawn Gary, you know, not quite as you know explosive, but he is a plus athlete. He's definitely gonna fit that Michael Bennett role. He's about the same size. He's gonna play a little edge, a little interior. I think they just saw him as a great scheme fit. I like the idea that they traded down, collected some more picks, and then took them when they kind of had to if that was going to be the first guy that they were going to take. But again, it was a reach, so we are going to give it a C. But if he turns into a good player under Pete Carroll, really not going to surprise me. Kind of the same thing about Marquise Blair here. Blair has some similarities to Adrian Amos. Um, so if he can develop into Adrian Amos, you're not going to complain about him in the second round. But there were a lot of good safeties on the board at this point. I don't know exactly if that was the right pick at the time. But they really made up for it in terms of value getting DK Metcalf at the end of the second round. Now Metcalf had to go to you know a very specific certain teams. Teams with strong-armed quarterbacks that like to throw deep. Really only a few teams I thought made sense, and Seattle was one of them. You know, Kansas City and Green Bay are other teams that come to mind, but only a certain amount of quarterbacks can have good ball placement deep down the field because where I think Metcalf struggles is turning those hips around and finding the football. But if you can put it where he's just got to stick those long arms out and you can you know, keep him in, in that straight line and utilize that ability as a deep threat, he's going to be a dominant weapon. Wide receiver has become a need here with news that Doug Baldwin has some pretty serious injury issues going on right now. We don't know if he's even going to play next year. So you love the DK Metcalf pick. Then you get Cody Barton at the end of the third round. Some people thought as a reach at a fourth to a fifth round grade on him, but he's got that ideal athleticism and size at the position. This is kind of similar to when they grabbed Bobby Wagner out of Utah State, I think also on the third round. So he could make an impact early or sit and develop, learn behind Bobby Wagner. I could see him becoming a good player. Then Gary Jennings, this is just a great fit. Seattle loves these kind of physical receivers that will block, have good straight line speed, but not necessarily the quickness uh, to you know have option routes, inside out route running ability. That's where Gary Jennings really lacks, but Jennings has the physicality as a run blocker, also a, a decent deep threat. Ne He's kind of similar to like a Jermaine Curse. I think they saw that in him. So I like the scheme fit there for Seattle. Then they take one of my 
sleepers. Ugo Amadi, he's probably going to start in the nickel as this team just lost Justin Coleman. He could also play either safety position, so I thought that was a great pick there. Seattle traditionally has, has stayed away from undersized defensive backs, but I think Amadi, this, this is confirmation that he's just too good of a player to get scared off by the, the fact that he's five foot nine. Really instinctive guy. Kind of reminds me of LaMarcus Joyner. So he could be an impactful rookie. Then they got Ben Burkirvan out of Washington here. Super athletic guy. I think he's going to make more of an impact than Cody Barton as a rookie because of those coverage abilities. Doesn't quite have the size to become a full three down linebacker, but could be an elite nickel defender at some point. And I can see him being a big impact. I gave that pick an A. Then they get Travis Homer. Nice compliment to the running backs they have, both Penny and Carson. Both have questions as receivers. Travis Homer can be kind of that Theo Riddick third down back. I think he could get some playing time as a rookie on third downs. Then you grab Demarcus Christmas, athletic interior developmental guy, and John Ursua, a wide receiver out of Hawaii, kind of a slot guy. So a couple reaches early. Going to bring this grade down a bit, but I really liked what they did in the meat of this draft. Second to fifth round, thought they got a, a lot of good players, even Travis Homer there in the sixth. So a B-plus here for the Seattle Seahawks. So that's going to do it for the NFC West. We're going to do the NFC North next. Please do hit that like button. Cheers as always, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.